Hello class, welcome back. Um, tonight we're going to be talking about using paper thin slabs to create a vessel that has the visage of like torn paper, corrugated cardboard. It's really cool and I think it's an innovative way to use the clay. Uh, this technique was invented by a guy by the name of Tim Kowalczyk. He's a Midwestern potter like myself and uh, his family, his father and his grandfather, they both worked in a uh, a box factory using corrugated cardboard and when he's going art school he kind of went full circle and returned to this uh, aesthetic and it's a uh, it's really interesting stuff um, I think it's super cool I hope you do too I am sort of reverse engineering how I think he does this technique um, and his results are a lot more elegant than mine but I think it's a cool springboard for you to start off from exploring like layering clay and uh you know creating sort of a distressed vessel so this is my piece that we're going to be working off of and this is made from three layers of clay that you know i've sort of texturized put on top of each other and um you know torn apart to make it kind of look like a an old box that uh has been out in the rain and you know tim created this technique i think it's so specific it's hard to uh, maybe put your own spin on it so i just want to give credit where credit's due and this is a tim kowalczyk technique i wouldn't try to like sell one of these cups or pots but i think it's a lot of fun to play with and you know have some decorative objects uh, around my studio using it um so yeah Let's get started. We got a lot of ground to cover and we should just get to it. So this is slab technique. Let's talk about the tools we're gonna need to get that done. If you've got a serrated rib, this helps. We're gonna have to do a little bit of slipping and scoring to seal up our cylinder. If you've got a rolling pin at home, um, this is gonna make your life a little bit easier, but you can always pinch out and sort of slam out your slabs to get them thin. This is really great to have because these slabs need to be paper thin and uh, they become kind of hard to handle, which I think uh, lends itself well to the distressed look. You're also going to need tonight a wooden rib. Anytime you're rolling out a slab, whether it's thick or thin, you're going to need to recompress your slab. It does two things. It, you know, will let you see if you have any air bubbles trapped in your clay. Once you, um, you know, rib the surface of it, the air bubbles rise to the top you can poke it with a needle tool and get them out of there but it also forces the clay particles closer together making a stronger wall and making it less likely to crack since again the way i'm doing this is i'm using these like paper thin slabs um you know i want to make sure that they're well compressed because like there's a higher risk of them cracking because of their thickness so yeah you're gonna need that if you've got one of these sculpture tools um they're pretty great this has like a exacto blade on the end of it and it comes really in handy because like i want these edges to be nice and sharp because i want them to look like a you know they're die cut paper so that is really good to have as always you want a little bowl of water a sponge and i have like a, a bunch of slip that i made from the clay body that i'm using all right oh other good tools to have this sculpture tool uh it's got like a little smooth scooped end and a ball bearing on the end uh, this is going to be really handy if you don't have this you can use a wood knife and uh, a hockey brush and that's a one inch hockey brush these are like two or three dollars a piece i like doing it when i'm using slab construction i use a wet end of a hockey brush to seal the bottom of my piece to get out any like unwanted texture and make sure I have a good seal between my wall and my platform. All right, so the only way to do it is to get to it. So let's get started. We're gonna have to start rolling out some slabs and getting out this test piece to really like sell this illusion of cardboard. Uh, you need to build it up from layers. So the bottom is actually made from three layers. Two are corrugated, one is flat. And the wall that I have around my pot is also three layers, uh, two flat, one corrugated, because I want to have a nice smooth interior of my pot, because um, I like the idea of this being like a drinking vessel. 
this clay shrinks about 15 to 16 percent so this is you know kind of like a unomi size now like a non-traditional teacup but it's going to after it's been fired and glazed it's going to be more like a tumbler if uh you like a nice single mop scotch uh this could be like a good vessel for that so lots of slabs very thin let's get to it um i've already this is sort of like an in-depth demo so i've already rolled out some of my slabs i don't want you to have to watch 40 minutes of me rolling slabs so i've prepared some already but i do want to show the process and uh, all together a cup about this size it's about nine and a half inches in diameter all the way around um, and it's about four inches tall uh, so i'm going to use about two pounds of clay to get this going. I'm gonna have a lot of scraps afterwards. Bonus points, if you're ever wanting to know the circumference of your piece, a tape measure is good to have. That way you can measure the outside and build a template for yourself. Um, I'm using this old glass tumbler as sort of a guide for these circles uh, that I'm gonna build my platform out of. And this is about nine and a half inches around. And so I used a tape measure to, you know, measure the circumference of my piece, like so. This is a great tape measure. It came with my sewing machine, and it works great for pottery. I weighed that out once I had my reading, and I made a rectangular template out of cardboard um, that, you know, is nine and a half inches long by four inches tall. That way I can roll out three slabs that are the same size. So first things first, I'm gonna get out my clay, put my template on the table, and I'm gonna roll out a quick slab. And the first thing I'm gonna do, pinching the clay between the heel of my palm and my fingers, is I'm just gonna sort of like set the width of this. When I'm using a rolling pin, it's gonna squish the clay out, it's gonna get a little bit wider but not much it's mostly going to stretch the clay and make it longer so i want to make sure that the piece i'm rolling out is already set to the width that i'm going to need it to because like i don't want to have a thin spot or a skinny spot at one part of my slab i want it to make sure that i'll be able to cover all the surface area all right so i just pinch that out with my fingers making sure it's at least as wide as that. I'll just set that over to the side as a guide and I'll get out my rolling pin. I'll start rolling it. And every pass I do with this rolling pin, I'm then gonna peel my clay off and flip it over. The clay wants to stick to the surface I'm rolling on and I don't want, and if I keep rolling in one direction, eventually my clay is gonna start bunching up on itself. So after every roll and compression, I pick the clay up and oop, I got some dry clay on my board and I roll it again, making sure that it's not stuck. All right. And you know, I'm almost there. I almost got the length that I need. It needs to be just a little longer. I think one more roll will do it. All right, we'll be able to get all four corners on here. I'll do one more just to be safe. All right, that should do it. All right, and usually this is about the thickness of a slab that I like to work with. This is a little thicker than a quarter inch, maybe closer to three eighths of an inch. And, you know, if I'm just doing traditional slab construction, this is the thickness that I like doing. But um, for this technique, I need these layers to be very thin because I'm going to be stacking three layers on top of each other and if I leave them at this thickness that's going to be a wall that's almost like three quarters of an inch thick for a small four inch cup that's like that's too thick it'll be too much weight so before I go any further I'm going to recompress my clay this will be my first ribbing getting out my rib And I'm just drawing it back toward me. This again is doing two things. It's compressing my clay. 
but it's also gonna let me know if I have any air bubbles in it. I cut this piece of clay right off of my block, so I don't have to, I'm not too concerned that I'm gonna have air bubbles in here, but I do wanna make sure that I'm compressing it well. Really pushing all those clay particles back together, making a nice strong wall. All right, so I'm noticing I got some thickness in the middle I need to get rid of, so I'm going to roll out my piece some more. I'll have to cut it out again. Rolled out a few slabs already today, so it's really wanting to stick to my piece of gypsum panel that I'm using as a working surface. At this point, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my first cut. At this, I'm using my exacto blade. I want a nice sharp edge, and I'm cutting around my template. Peel off all this excess. You're gonna have a lot of scraps. And this is very soft clay that I'm using. So I'm just gonna ball this extra stuff up right now. And I'm putting it back in my bag. Waste not, want not. All right, now let's check the thickness of my slab. You know, it's very thin, but I need to actually go thinner. So I'm gonna Roll this out some more. So now I would say this slab is less than a quarter inch thick. It is very thin. And now this is gonna be a corrugated section. So I'm gonna move it over here. And let's talk about my workspace over here. Okay, so this here is a piece of corrugated cardboard. There's a couple places you can source this from. Um, Sometimes a pizza joint will put a pizza on top of this thing. Uh, another place is Pepperidge Farm makes a cookie called uh, the Pirouette. It's kept in a circular tin. And for whatever reason, there's like a mat like this inside of that tin that you can use to texturize your clay. Uh, this one came from a pizza box. <laughs> so I'm going to put my slab on this thing now. I guess I'll get it more toward the middle. So you can see. All right. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my rib and I'm gonna compress it against this corrugated piece. This does two things. It starts getting the texture uh, on the bottom of my piece. And it also starts revealing the corrugated lines on the top of my slab. If you can see that, I have like these slight ripples on the top now, and that's gonna guide the next part. Because something that's really aesthetically significant is that corrugated cardboard has a rippled edge kind of like a 
like a potato chip. So by just pressing this on to this piece of corrugated board, the bottom is going to have that, but I need to make sure the top has that too. By compressing my slab on top of this piece, I'm revealing the corrugation marks underneath. And now I'm going to follow those marks and then the trenches of this corrugated board, I'm just going to press the clay into it. And this is gonna create the ripple. It's important when you're doing this to start from the edge and follow it all the way through. Okay, now this is a delicate part because my slab is so thin. I want to start peeling it off. Notice how I'm sort of guiding it with my non-dominant hand because it's going to be very easy for this piece to tear. All right, boom, that's what we're looking at. I'm just going to move this over off screen. As we get out our next piece, let's move back over here. All right, so that will be sort of the middle layer of this cup that we'll see once we like tear off the top layer. So let's build our platform now while that's setting up. I've used some scraps from a couple other slabs that I've rolled out. And we're just gonna make these thin. I'm gonna do two corrugated pieces. All right, this will do. All right, so now I'm gonna get out that cup I showed you earlier. I'm gonna use that as a sort of guide and press two circles into it because I need two corrugated pieces. And get out our handy dandy knife. And we'll cut those circles out. Cut over the side. and save your scraps. Clay is expensive to ship. All right, so these are looking pretty good. So I'm just gonna put them on my corrugated piece. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll start with this guy. And again, getting out my wooden rib. Let's just pat this guy down into it a little bit. I got my corrugated rib. 
and rib this guy. I see where those lines are. Okay. Get out my blending tool. You could do this with a dull wood knife too. And we corrugate this guy again. Bring in your tool all the way out to the edge because you want that ripple along the edge. You want it to show through. Peel that up. And that is what we're looking for. We really want that rippled edge. Put that off to the side. Do my next one. Press it into my texture. Reveal those guiding lines. Start pressing the clay into that recessed area. And again, really want to make sure I'm going all the way to the edge. So we get that nice ripple. Got a nice ripple there. All right, so I got two of those. One of those, looking good. Let's move the camera back. All right, so now let's get out our other slabs. So this slab is just about perfect for what we need. This is probably a little more, I mean, a little less than a quarter inch. And this is gonna be our base. This is gonna be what our cylinder is. Let's get this out. I'm gonna trim this edge a little bit. All right. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to start the stacking process now. So I got this and like, you know, I, these pieces, they've become so delicate. I can't really slip and score this up. So I'm going to be depending on moisture and gravity to hold my clay layers together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my sponge with some water on it and I'm going to wet down this surface. liberal dose of water on there and that water that's going to help turn the first this top layer into a layer of slip and now i'm going to get out that first corrugated piece that i rolled out oh and it's tearing up but that is fine and i'm just going to lay this on top And I'm just lightly patting it down. Grab another piece of that corrugated stuff. And pat this down too. And you know what I'm doing? I'm scooching. I'm just scooching this back and forth. I'm not really adding any pressure to it, but I'm giving it a scooch. All right. Now I'm going to get a 
can see I'm squeezing most of that water out. I'm just gonna pat this. I'm just gonna get like a little dew on top here. All right. I'm gonna move this over to the side for a moment because my next piece here, I need this thing to be even thinner. This piece is what I'm gonna put on top of my corrugation. And I'm gonna be tearing it away. So I want it to be pretty, pretty thin. I don't wanna add undue weight to my piece. This layering technique, you know, you don't want a four inch tall cup to weigh two pounds. Like that's how much clay I need to start with, but I don't want that much weight on my pot. All right. So I'm gonna cut you away. I'm gonna cut you away. I gather up all those scraps. A lot of scraps here. done so let's keep this clay okay so I got a super paper thin slab I got this slab with my corrugation on top I'm going to just make sure, get some dew, all right, then I'm going to lay this slab down. Just adding just a little bit of pressure. I want these things to stick, but not too much. All right. At this point, I'm gonna pick this sort of sandwich slab up and I'm gonna start curling it into it's gonna be my cylinder. Okay. All, right. All right, now while it's resting up like this, because, you know, clay has memory. Clay wants to go back into the shape that it was previously. So I'm getting this slab used to bending into a cylinder before I finish it up. So I'm just kind of training my clay right now to stay in this cylinder shape. All right, I'm gonna put this over here. And now we're gonna work on our bottom as that thing's setting up. This piece, this is gonna be for the base. Been letting this sit up for a little while. Roll it out this way too. All right, now again using my cup as a guide, make an imprint of a circle. Get out my blade. scrap in my bag. And 
Okay. So now we're going to get out our corrugated chips from before. Okay, you know what? I forgot one chip. Oh, the best of times. Oh, there's actually four layers to the bottom of this cup. I've only got three. It's going to be a problem. So let me roll out another slab. All right, so this is going to be the bottom of my cup. I have that corrugated cardboard showing through. And again, I'm going to get a good dose of water on my sponge. And I'm going to get some moisture on this. After that, I'm going to grab one of my regular slabs without the corrugation. I'm going to press it down and I'm going to kind of scooch this thing back and forth as I press. I'm not using a lot of pressure, just enough for this thing to stick. All right. After that, rinse and repeat. Get some moisture on this side of the slab. and kind of making a sandwich. Again, pressing a little bit, scooching it back and forth, making sure that clay is sticking. Before I add some moisture, I put this cookie right on top which will be the interior of my cup. Nice fat stack, got that corrugated look to it. And now let's start sealing this thing with my wall. All right, so now we're gonna get out our serrated rib. You can do this with a needle tool too, but the thing is I just wanna score up this edge. I'm going to put a lot of slip on there, a lot of slip on there. And I want it to stick. All right, then we're going to get out our cylinder again. And this bottom edge, we're going to use our 
serrated rib, and we're going to score that up too. to double check the circumference. I find that I almost always have, for this layering technique, I almost always have too long of a slab. And so we're gonna have to cut off some of this excess. All right, and the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna need to bevel this edge. So I'm gonna hold this at a 45 degree angle, my knife, and I'm going to cut off this excess at an angle. Right. I'm gonna see where these two things line up, and I'm gonna cut off this excess at the same angle. So by beveling these two edges, creating that angle, now this slab is gonna fit together a lot easier without a big ugly seam in the middle. All right. So feeling pretty good about that. What I'm gonna do now is gather up all my scraps, save them. While I'm over here, I'm gonna grab my slip bowl. I got a nice, luscious, creamy bowl of slip. And I'm gonna put a lot, a lot of slip on here. Cause I've got a very uneven edge on the bottom and I wanna have a lot of material for this cup to grab onto. So I'm putting a good liberal dose of slip on here. All right, now that I got this scored up, I'm going to Smush it down onto the slippy side. I'm gonna get some slip on my finger again. I'm gonna slip up one area of this. I'm gonna tack these things together. I'm putting my hand on the inside. I'm just making sure these things are nice and married together. And like always, giving it a scooch as I press down. I don't want to blend these edges, so like I gotta just really let gravity do the work for me. All right. Grab a dry sponge. Let's get this slip on the outside edge. All right. And so we're pretty much done. Got our vessel. All right. We're, this video is getting kind of long. So, you know, I'll we'll use a damn pocket brush you can tell that I got a lot of slip and maybe it's too dark in there. But I have a lot of slip just chilling on the inside. I'll use a damp pocket brush and blend all that slip in. But now I wanna do this sort of like fun part of this technique, which is to start peeling away, just tearing off 
this top layer, this top slab, to give it that distressed look. Sometimes I like to go up from the bottom, grab an edge, sort of pull that away, and then I can begin tearing all this stuff. away big chunks of it. This kind of makes it look like I've got like a piece of cardboard that was like left out in the rain. I think that's pretty cool. So I got a cool thing going on. One thing I like to do, my only contribution to this technique is, you know, this clay wall is so thick. It's got a lot of room to play with that I like to sort of cup the outside and from the inside, I'm gonna press out. I'm gonna give this a little bit more of a rounded shape. It's also gonna help balance the piece a little bit. Gives me a little bit more interior space. I'm supporting the outside as I'm doing this, just to make sure I don't accidentally punch a hole in the side of my piece. But you can see this causes those corrugations become like more exaggerated and it gives me a little bit more volume on the inside of my piece. I can keep a little bit more of whatever beverage I've chosen right in there. All right, so this video is getting kind of long. Um, this is pretty much it. I'll go back and make sure my inside is nice and blended and then I'll uh, address the rim, but we'll talk about that back in the chat. And um, yeah, see you in a minute.